two of the most important tools to describe spread of a distribution of your data are by reporting your mean and standard deviation, or by reporting your median, IQR, and ranges. However, some people I have talked to get confused over which tool to use and when. I hope this decision will be a little bit easier after watching this video. I will very briefly go over the definition and calculation method for both standard deviation and IQR, and then explain which one to choose depending on your data set and why. On this slide, we have the blue line representing an arbitrary interval series, and the orange dots represent some samples. On this example, we have 11 data points. So if we take our median, which is the middle data point, then Q2 will be on our sixth ball from the left. Then if we take the median of the right side of Q2, then it will be the middle point of these five balls. Similarly, if we take the middle point for the left side, it will be the middle ball or the third ball from the left, which is the middle ball of the five balls on the left half. So you've essentially identified Q1, Q2, Q3, which are the split of your quartiles, quartile one, two, three, and four. Once you have Q1, Q2, and Q3, now you can proceed to calculate the inner quartile range, IQR, which is Q3 minus Q1, essentially gives you the distance or the spread between Q3 and Q1. Knowing the value of Q1, Q2, and Q3 will help you get a sense of how spread out your data is, even when the data is not evenly spread on each side of your median. Notice how one side is a little bit longer than the other. This can also be represented using a box plot or box and whisker plot. Um, this line represents the median and the edges of the box represent the Q1 and Q3, and then the whiskers are the outliers. And from a technical point of view, this box actually incorporates or includes 50% of your data and the rest of the 50%, 25% on this side and 25% is on this side. And we usually report median, IQR, Q1, Q2, and Q3. And the bigger this number is, you know that the more spread out your data is. And the smaller the day, uh, the IQR, the more tighter your values are. In this slide, we will quickly talk about how to calculate standard deviation. Let's take a look at this bell curve, also known as normal distribution. Notice how both sides of the mean are symmetrical. This will come in handy when we go to the next slide. So X bar represents the mean of this distribution, also known as the average of all data points. Then we will calculate the distance between all sample points from the mean by subtracting X bar from X. Once we have that, X minus X bar, we're gonna be squaring it, which will get rid of any negative numbers that you will come across. And this Greek symbol here means adding all of those individual X minus X bar squared. Once we have that, we'll be dividing it by N minus one. And here is the number of samples. You might be thinking, if it is average, why aren't we just dividing by the number of samples, just like we do when calculating average? Well, statisticians found out that when you are not using the whole population and do any sort of standard deviation calculation on a sample from the population and divide the sum of the X minus X bar squared, you tend to underestimate the standard deviation. So N minus one is something they all agreed on to reduce the bias in your calculation. So what you have now is called the variance, the inside portion here. And because you squared the number, you end up with a squared unit, which doesn't really make sense in terms of data evaluation standpoint. So we go ahead and take the square root of that value, which gets rid of the square unit, and you end up with the standard deviation. Standard reporting style is to include mean and standard deviation. If this value is high, that means your data set is dispersed and low number represents tighter data point, which can also be thought of as you have high likelihood of finding values closer to the mean when randomly drawing samples. In this slide, we'll take a look at a case study where the distribution is skewed to the left. This will give us a sense of when not to use standard deviation approach. 
This represents income of a sample group. As you might expect, majority of the people are earning low wages and very few people are with really high income. If we take mean of this data, it will be 24,000 and then standard deviation will be $27,500. It's shown on the histogram by the two dashed lines. What the 27,500 mean is that if you add or subtract the number from the mean, it will give you a sense of the income of majority of the people, which is about 68%. However, you can see that if you subtract the 27 from the 24, which is your mean, you will end up with a negative number, which doesn't really make sense in real life. So this is one of the shortcomings of applying standard deviation to data sets that are not closer to symmetrical in shape. Now let's take a look at the same data set and calculate IQR. The median of this data set is $16,500 and the IQR here is $28,000. Uh, this number just tells you how much spread there is in your data, like we talked about earlier. You can get more understanding of the data or data set by looking at your Q1. Let's just say in our case, 5,000 and Q3, let's just say in this case, $35,000. And you can go ahead and say that 50% of your samples earn between that $5,000 and $35,000. Notice how the first method includes incredibly high paying people in the mean calculation, which pushes the mean higher, but that doesn't represent most of the people in the, in the second method by design IQR ignores really high numbers and really low numbers from its calculation giving us a better representation of bulk of the sample data set. In short, whenever you have data set distribution that are reasonably symmetrical to the central peak, then use standard deviation method. Any other skewed distribution, you'll be better off using the IQR method. Hope this sheds some light on this dilemma. Thanks for watching.